All right. Welcome to CPO GS Training Tuesday. We're so excited to have you all with us. All right. The first things that we're going to cover or are on our agenda today are our updates and reminders. We're going to go over CPO notice 2025.01. We'll tell you where you can find some additional training and we'll end with our Tuesday takeaway. Our updates and reminders. So the only thing I have for you today is that this CMS blanket release approval form has been updated. The overall content and structure is the same. Uh, the agency's director title has been changed. So that is on our website for your use now. CPO notice 2025.01 on August 9th, this past Friday, 2024, Governor Pritzker signed House Bill 5511 into law, revising the Illinois Procurement Code 30 ILCS 500, which is the code, and the Governmental Joint Purchasing Act 30 ILCS 525 JPA. The law went into immediate effect. So as a result of the change in law, several provisions of the standard procurement rules, 44 IL, admin code one may need to be updated to reflect changes to the code in those instances where the code conflicts with the or with the rule conflicts with the code the code as amended shall be followed the first part of cpo notice um, addresses the amendments to the illinois procurement code and jpa Section 1-10B25. This is a section speaks to exemptions to the Illinois Procurement Code. This new amendment adds the code exemption right for procurement the necessary. Oh my, so we have uh, some audio coming through from someone else. Sorry about that. Uh, necessary for increasing the recruitment and retention of state employees. Additionally, it provides that the procuring state agency make a good faith determination that is necessary and appropriate for the expenditure to be exempt and it is conducted in a manner substantially in accordance with sections 20-160, section 25-50, and article 50 of the code. Section 1-13 of the Procurement Code covers applicability to public institutions of higher education. Therefore, the amendment to Section B-5 only applies to public institutions of higher education. Section 20-20 is in regards to the small purchase procurement method. Part E is a new addition to this part of the code and it reads, it provides the cumulative small purchases under 1,000 made in a previously non-contemplated manner by the same or separate individuals or departments within an agency that exceed the small purchase threshold do not constitute stringing and are allowable. The Chief Procurement Officer for General Services Rules 44 IL Admin Code Section 1.2005S and the Illinois Criminal Code of 2012, which is in 720 ILCS 533E-2I-5, provides the definitions of stringing. Section 20-60 covers the duration of contracts. Part A has been amended and provides that the third parties may lease state-owned communications infrastructure, including dark fiber networks, conduit, and access or excess communication tower capacity for any period of time deemed to be in the best interest of the state, but not exceeding 20 years. Additionally, it provides that contracts may be entered into that extend beyond the active term of the award, so long as the contract was entered into prior to the award expiration date and does not exceed 10 years. Section 20-180 is brand new. This amendment adds a new section which provides that nothing in the code prohibits state agencies from accepting bids or proposals submitted solely via an electronic procurement e-procurement system. 
and a state agency may not adopt a rule prohibiting a state agency from accepting bids or proposals submitted solely via an e-procurement system. As long as the e-procurement system integrates with the portfolio's bulletin and all other provisions of the code are met. Section 30-17 is also new. This defines indefinite quantity contract and job ordering contract. Additionally, it provides that construction agencies may procure construction contracts via job order contracting using competitive sealed bidding in accordance with section 30-15 of the code. 40-15B1. This amendment provides that a request for information is not required to procure a lease for property of less than 10,000 square feet with a base rent of $200,000. The amendment increases the property's base rent maximum from less than 100,000 per year to a new maximum of less than $200,000 per year. Section 45-56, this one is also new. This amendment adds a new section which provides that the chief procurement officer in consultation with the toll highway authority shall set aside contracts for mid-sized businesses in the toll highway authority's procurements of construction, construction related and construction support contracts. Section 45-150 of the Illinois Procurement Code addresses bid preferences for Illinois businesses. Let's go over the amendments and new additions to this section. Part C removes application of the preferences to construction related professional services in subsection C and throughout the section. Part D changes the date for construction agencies to report to the governor and general assembly from by September 1st to by December. E-5 is new. This requires that the bid of the time of bid submission, the CPO obtain an affidavit and other supporting documents from a bidder demonstrating that the bidder is an Illinois business. And if applicable, the bidder to submit an affidavit and support documents demonstrating the bidder is eligible for a 4% bid preference. The CPO may, at any time during the term of the contract, require the contractor to submit an affidavit and support documents demonstrating that the bidder is an Illinois business and eligible for the 4% bid preference. Additional changes to 45-105 include E-10. This one is also new. It provides that a contractor who is awarded a contract through the use of a preference for Illinois businesses is subject to discipline under Section 50-65 if the contractor provides false information in order to obtain that preference. Still on bid preferences for Illinois businesses, Part G. This changes the definition of Illinois businesses. The amendment provides that a contractor must be operating and headquartered in Illinois and subject to applicable state taxes for at least one year prior to publication of the invitation for bid. The amendment provides that a foreign corporation is an Illinois business if authorized to transact business in Illinois, has an establishment for transacting business in Illinois, and is operating, headquartered, and providing construction or construction-related professional services at least one year prior to publication of the invitation for bid. The amendment removes the requirement that the Illinois business be operating under several Illinois statutes related to business organization and operation. The amendment provides that an Illinois business does not include a business headquartered outside of Illinois that has an affiliated entity operating in Illinois. Prohibited bidders, offers, potential contractors, and contractors are covered in Section 50-10.5. Part E now provides that a person or business is not prohibited by Section E from submitting an unsolicited proposal under Section 19 of the Public-Private Partnerships of Transportation Act. Section 50-39 covers procurement communications reporting. 
House Bill 5511 made amendments to Part A. These include amendments change the type of communication that is excluded from reporting. Amendment of uh, five or four, sorry, provides that communication of a firm's products or services are excluded provided the products or services are not directly related to an open procurement matter. Additionally, it removes the requirement that such communication be unsolicited. Amendment adds a new subsection and exclusion from communication reporting for communication about proposal deficiencies as provided under Section 35 of the Ar Architectural Engineering and Land Surveying Qualifications Se Base Selection Act 30 ILCS 535. This is a newly added section of the code. It provides that the CPO may cure a violation or deficiency in a procurement when she determines it is in the best interest of the state. The amendment requires that both the state purchasing officer and head of the agency shall request the cure. The SPO shall provide a written description of the violation or deficiency and the CPO shall provide a written determination permitting or denying the request and post the determination on her website 14 days after completion of the procurement. Now that we covered the amendments and additions to the Illinois Procurement Code, let's do a summary of some statutory changes outside of the Procurement Code. The Governmental Joint Purchasing Purchase Act had a new part added to A-15. The amendment adds a new section which provides that the Chief Procurement Officer may authorize any state governmental unit to purchase or lease supplies under a contract procured by a state agency. The CPO shall consult with the state agency before making the contract available. The UPP, which is our Unified Procurement Program, will facilitate the process for any governmental unit seeking to purchase or lease supplies under this subsection. The Governmental Joint Purchase Act was additionally amended in Part 4. The amendment provides that purchases, orders, or contracts shall be awarded to the lowest responsible bidder or highest ranked offerer as ranked by a cooperative purchasing program like UP. If the cooperative purchasing program has not ranked the bidders or offers, then the governmental unit making the purchase shall rank the bidders or offers by determining that the selected contract best meets the governmental unit's needs. When a supply or service is available on contracts from multiple contractors, the amendment provides that a governmental unit may determine a contract best meets their needs and select to use the contract. Article 1 of House Bill 5511 creates the Progressive Design Build Program Act. The Act provides that the Capital Development Board shall establish the Progressive Design Build Pilot Program to use the Progressive Design Build Delivery Method for up to three public projects if use of that project is still in the state's best interest. The Department of Natural Resources Act was amended as follows in Section 1-20. Uh, Part B changes the maximum length of time that the Department of Natural Resources may lease certain land or property under its jurisdiction from 5 to 10 years. Part C is new. This amendment adds a new subsection which provides that the Department of Natural Resources shall competitively bid any project authorized pursuant to the subsection pursuant to Section 20-15, 20-10C, and 20-10F of the Procurement Code. The amendment adds other requirements as well. 20 ILCS 805-805-280. This is the Civil Administrative Code of Illinois, the Department of Natural Resources Conservation Law. This created a new section and the new section provides that the Department of Natural Resources shall competitively bid any project authorized pursuant to this subsection pursuant to Section 20-15, 20-10C, and 20-10F of the Procurement Code. Again, this amendment adds other requirements as well. 
the Freedom of Information Act, uh, 5 ILCS 140-7TT, this is new. This amendment adds a new subsection which provides that proposals or bids submitted by engineering consultants in response to requests for proposals or other competitive bidding requests by the Toll Highway Authority or the Department of Transportation are exempt from disclosure under the Freedom of Information Act. 30 ILCS 535-35, this amendment is to the Architectural Engineering and Land Surveying Qualification Based Selection Act. It provides that as part of the state's agency's commitment to fostering greater diversity in contracting, the state agency may communicate with firms who were not selected in order to provide further information about the firm's proposal deficiencies. 20 ILCS 3407 45-5, this amendment provides that the procurements to develop finance, con construct, lease, manage, divest, ownership in, and operate the Hotel Florence and the Pullman factory on behalf of the state shall be pursuant to the re-imaging, re reimagining Hotel Florence Act. That was a lot to cover, but please note that the CPO notice provides a summary of House Bill 5511 and does not provide all details you should review the new legislation. And you can do that by going to ILGA.gov and searching for HB 5511. You are able to view the full text of the public act and the new amendments along with the changes to current sections. Any questions entered in the chat today will be reviewed and we will attempt to give those answers via email. The best way to get your questions answered though and how they affect your agency is to talk with your SPO. Please make sure to visit our CPOGS training center for more training opportunities. We have the following um, that are related to bid by. We have our diversity and inclusion and procurement training. You can find access to that one net training in CPO Notice 2024.04. We have our monthly bid by training happening tomorrow virtually, and we have our practice session the second uh, Thursday of each month. In addition to those, the CPOGS Procurement Training Academy offers three courses that are approved by UPPCC for contact hours. Registration for these courses is required. Please visit our training center for all upcoming dates. Uh, the dates that we have available this year, this calendar year are going fast. With that, I am going to turn it over to Nancy. Good morning, everyone. Um, today we are going to share an idiom and that idiom is fly off the handle. The meaning is to become suddenly enraged. Uh, the origin of this idiom is um, from the 1800s when some axes were so poorly made that when swung, the axe heads would literally fly off the handle. We encourage you to not fly off the handle this week and remain calm and always review any of your emails or anything before sending. Give it some time. Have a great week. Thank you so much. All right. Again, if you have any questions, you can send those over to cpogs.training at illinois.gov. If you have anything specific for your agency, talk to your individual SPO. Thank you all so much and have a wonderful week.